Lithium-ion batteries are everywhere, from cell phones to electric vehicles. They're the beating heart of this electric age. And every year, hundreds of thousands of tons of these batteries go into the waste. North America-based Lifecycle has established a massive recycling program to put 95% of those materials back into circulation. I'm Andrew Wilson in Davos, from where I spoke remotely to Lifecycle co-founder Ajay Kochar about mining above ground. Ajay, thanks for joining us. First of all, give us a brief overview of the Lifecycle organization. For sure. So Lifecycle is like urban mining. We recycle lithium ion batteries. So these are batteries you find in your phone, but importantly, all the way to electric vehicles and much more. And really, our business is about recovering the value and the materials within to return those back to making new lithium ion batteries. Again, we're a commercial business, almost 300 people today, global in nature and growing in lockstep with the electrification and lithium ion battery revolution. This is a classic tale of the circular economy, isn't it? So before we came along, and our background is really from the lithium industry, lithium ion batteries weren't exactly circular. You'd have them going to traditional, say, nickel or legacy facilities with some materials being recovered, but only partially being returned to the economy and not necessarily back into new lithium ion batteries. So as a circular economy, our whole objective here is to do that in a sustainable fashion. Sustainable to us means both environmentally sustainable and economically sustainable because it has to be sustainable in the long term as a business and has to make good economics in terms of what we do. So yes, this is exactly the circular economy in action. And that's the space you occupy, isn't it? Right at the heart of the modern technological arena. Absolutely. So there's really three big mega trends here that we sit at the epicenter of. The first is electrification. Okay, so everything is getting electrified from electric vehicles down to your lawnmower, right? The second is ESG and within that, the circular economy. And the third, which is very topical in our world today, is the localization of the production of critical materials. So really that's referred to as the domestic supply of say nickel and lithium and cobalt and much more. You've worked within so many aspects of this industry. When was the moment you decided that preserving these materials was going to be your direction? My co-founder and I, Tim Johnson and I, both come from the lithium industry. So we were actually at the other far end producing lithium chemicals that go into uh, lithium ion batteries from the virgin uh, space or the mining space. And what we saw was lithium actually historically has not been recovered from lithium ion batteries. And it's one of the critical materials, I mean, it's criticality for our economy, national security, other aspects that wasn't recovered, whereas things like nickel cobalt were recovered to a certain degree. So that was really the aha moment to say, hey, we can do this. We can bring technology and we can bring great commercial approaches to really revolutionize the space in terms of lithium ion batteries and create a true circular economy solution. Tell me about your spoke and hub model. So we started 2016, almost six years ago. As we went along, of course, we worked closely and have worked closely with great global customers, including groups like LG, GM, and many others. And one of the biggest things we were hearing is, yeah, you know, recycling, the technology, big issue, need a better solution. But they were also always telling us, hey, a big issue we have is actually logistics. So a large portion of the cost of recycling for them is in logistics. So hence we thought, okay, well, this is kind of like a, a hub and spoke, but it's reverse logistics. So it's spoke and hub. So you have a network of spokes, which are regional mechanical processing sites, taking the batteries, break them down non-thermally to make intermediate materials. And then a centralized hub, which then converts those intermediate materials back into battery grade end products. And that solution is what really meets the customer need and gets at the most economic and most environmentally friendly lithium ion battery recycling solution. We've learned a lot from recent geopolitics and the pandemic. We've seen ships backed up in Suez and Antwerp. The thinking around supply chains has changed forever, hasn't it? It has, and it's, it's a funny thing. Eh? You know, probably four or five years ago, we would have never, you know, the term supply chain would have been for a group of likely specialists, but it is top of mind, right, for our world today. And the whole theme is localization, right? localizing the supply of lithium batteries and the whole supply chain thereof 
and then how they're dealt with at their end of life and also as part of that manufacturing scrap I was talking about. As you make batteries, it's generating a level of scrap that needs to be dealt with. So our business is inherently localized and this fits exactly within that thematic of trying to create that local supply chain to generate those critical battery materials. And crucially, you give back to each customer what they send you. It's almost a, a one-stop shop setup, isn't it? Yeah, and this is you know, another example of innovation, right? So our technology enables that. As you make batteries, it's actually, there are parts of that process and the way that things are cut out from, say, a sheet of material, it leaves behind material that needs to be dealt with. And so we're taking that scrap from them on the way in. And then on the way out, we've signed an offtake agreement with them. This is over 10 years to supply back one of those critical materials, nickel uh, sulfate, which is the battery form to go back into batteries. It's so easy for people to relate to what you do, which is exciting. Has it been an adventure for you? Even at your size now, do you still feel like a startup? Yes, yeah, so we're approaching 300 people. We're growing at a very rapid pace. We're global. We have offices, operations here in North America, now opened in Europe, APAC presence as well in Asia Pacific. We think of ourselves as a growth company, and I think we need to keep that culture as we move forward. But the only way you can scale is to balance it with structure. And that's the exciting and the challenging, but yet opportunity part of this, and we're up for the challenge. There's a lot of cooperation in what you do, educating clients as well as listening to their needs, and of course, growing alongside them. Partnerships and trust must be an important part of your world. Look, when you think about the battery in a car, EV battery pack in a car, or even in your phone, it's actually a very complicated supply chain that creates that. And that supply chain has materials from could be South America, could be other parts of the world, uh, countries in Africa, moving around the world, getting refined, getting turned into you know, battery materials, getting turned into a battery, then that battery potentially being shipped, right? So traditionally, it's been a very elongated, complicated supply chain. That's getting increasingly localized, but inherently you need a whole bunch of different skill sets to create that and create that supply chain and make it happen. So inherently, you have to partner. The predictions for spent lithium ion batteries are staggering. 15 million tons at end of use by 2030. It feels like an emergency. How do you stay optimistic? Uh, I think a large part of that in terms of keeping that optimism is part of that partnership and keeping close to our customers is hearing their excitement, their urgency, and keeping the bigger mission in view here, which is really the climate crisis. And I think as we keep oriented and rooted in that, and understanding we're part of that bigger picture and helping make that happen, that's really helpful because at the end of the day, it then says, okay, well, we gotta move quickly here, structured, execute well, and help make this happen. And if we do this right, which is of course our intent, the ultimate outcome is that we'll help proliferate more electric vehicles. Recycling can help to bring down, ultimately, the cost base of those materials in EV batteries, which is a big part of the cost now, stabilize those supply chains long-term, wean ourselves off of needing more and more virgin mining in the future, do it via urban mining, and to do it with a much lower carbon footprint. And if we do this right, we can make this work for generations to come and much beyond you know, our current, say, view in time. RJ, thanks very much indeed. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate being on.